Hey everyone, it is Wednesday, January 3rd. The time is 1.12 p.m. and the temperature is around 3 degrees Celsius, although with the wind chill down here by the lake, it is certainly much colder than that, or at least it feels much colder than that. And this here is HTO Park West. And there's a look to the north, the CN Tower, of course, and the South Core, which is blocking the Financial District skyline view as my voice starts to crack. And there's a look east over towards the Portlands and the Toronto Islands and Billy Bishop Airport directly in front and you can see the ferry there making one of the world's shortest ferry runs between the island and the mainland whoops and I just finished recording a live stream that started up at Rosedale Station and it brought me down to this area And for this one, I'll be walking west, making my way over to the Bentway. And we'll check out the skating rink at the Bentway this year. I just scare all these seagulls off. Well, let's head south down to Queens Key. Oh, someone's dropped a sandwich in a bag. Little savages. This one's wondering if I have anything for them. I just ate a cookie that I bought at a second cup coffee shop on my live stream, but I don't have any leftover for them. Just making sure I zipped my backpack up. All seems to be well. And there is the Sky Dome straight ahead. Which is undergoing phase two of some rather significant renovations leading into the upcoming baseball season. There's the financial district. So I will walk west here over to Spadina and then I'll head up into the City Place neighborhood. From there I'll take Fort York Boulevard all the way over to the Bentway. And perhaps then I'll head up to King Street. So I'll pass through the Garrison Crossing. And I'll probably just hop on a streetcar. And make my way back up to Midtown. It's a pretty quiet day in the city. Even Bay Street was pretty dead to the world. I guess a lot of people aren't quite back at work yet. Free sunscreen, SPF 30. Is it really free if there's no sunscreen available? I think not. The 
might notice a theme of quieter than usual streets throughout my videos in January. That's just kind of the way it is. Things will liven up on the weekends. And of course, areas like Queen West and around UFT and the Annex and Young Street will be busy. There's the Spadina wave deck on the left. And this whole area would have been quite crowded a few days ago on New Year's Eve. As the city was holding its fireworks display over the waterfront. And this is the foot of Spadina, or I guess Lower Spadina to be more correct. So we'll head up the west side here. You can see the signature city place towers rising in the center. Those are the last two condos to go up as a part of City Place. Hopefully I can catch this light here. I'm going to get hung up in the middle of it. Uh, this is Lakeshore Boulevard I'm about to cross. And that is the crumbling and rather decrepit Gardner Expressway. Which will soon be looked after by the province of Ontario and not the city of Toronto. The city has recently uploaded, or rather the province has agreed to take on the Gardner Expressway and the Don Valley Parkway. So those two towers going up in the center of the shot are 59 and 69 story towers respectively. called Concord House, named after Concord Attics, the developer of City Place. got the right idea. There's still a, a rather large disconnect between the waterfront and the city. Even though they've opened up things a lot more in recent years, it's still a pain in the butt to cross as a pedestrian. You have to navigate that jungle with very long light crossings a very long change between signal changes. And City Place here was a master plan committee that started going up in the early 2000s. 
I think it's now at around 32 buildings in total, mostly condos. I had a friend who lived in Nine Navy Wharf, which I think is that one in the center of the shot now. So I'll be making a left at Port York Boulevard. I sound a bit nasally. It's because I woke up with a bit of a stuffy nose. But at one point, this was called the Signature Tower. I think it was originally planned to be over 70 stories. And Concord was really dragging their feet at developing it. Here goes a northbound 510 Spadan streetcar. And unfortunately, these buildings block a great view of the CN Tower along Fort York Boulevard. I'll spin around and show you what I mean by that. This is west on the south side of Fort York Boulevard. And most of City Place is along here between Spadina and Bathurst, although there's a number of buildings just east of Spadina. There's a fox in the fiddle. They've got a Sobeys Urban Fresh. Not the most affordable. supermarkets. And there is the new well off in the distance and there's a rail corridor that severs access between Front Street and City Place just to the north of here. There is a pedestrian crossing. Otherwise you have to cross over either at Spadina or Bathurst. fan of how the retail meets the street here or how sort of nondescript and generic it is. This is what happens when you master plan a community and hand a set of keys over to a single developer. But the location is pretty excellent. Apparently some of the more recent buildings are much better than the first set of buildings that went up here. And this park is Canoe Landing. And we got a dusting of snow over New Year's and I saw on Reddit there's a picture from one of these high rises. Someone drew a rather phallic symbol in the snow, that was kind of funny. and you can see it from way up. There's Hunter's Landing, a popular bar. That's a whole chain of bars. There's one at University in front called Kelly's Landing.
There is a public school just over there. So I guess you could say this is a Vancouver style development in the heart of downtown Toronto. There's a large 24 hour Timmy's. That's something I think the city is lacking in enough. 24 hour spots. There used to be a number of 24 hour metro grocery stores, including the one near where I live, at Young and Eglinton, that is now just operating under normal hours, unfortunately. Scoops by Dimitri's. Dimitri's is a restaurant chain. A restaurant chain. A dessert <laughs> restaurant chain. Sansa Thai Ramen. I don't know, I just like the retail you get in older buildings better than this. There tends to be more character in the signage and the storefronts. And there also tends to be lower rent which attracts a more interesting variety of businesses. You get the feeling that mom and pa type owners are getting squeezed out. I'm guessing they give the patient the option to pull the blinds down before they get some dental work done. So this is Bathurst Street coming up, the western end of downtown. That'll lead me to underneath the Bentway. Let's cross over to the north side here. And what I meant by the CN Tower was blocked. I forgot to spin around earlier, but you can see to the far left of the shot here that new 69 story Canada House Tower is blocking it and used to get a pretty spectacular view walking east along that street. Especially at nighttime when the CN Tower was all lit up. And just to the right here is Old Fort York. That's an early 19th century military site. Dates back to the late 1700s. And it was used by the British and Canadians to defend Toronto Harbour from those pesky invading Americans.
So we're gonna head up by the ice skating surface coming up here. Imagine some of these people might be coming from there. And underneath the gardener is the Bentway, and that's a public space that hosts various art shows, community events, as well as ice skating in the winter. It was first proposed back in 2015, and it came into reality in 2018. It starts to the west of here, just at Strawn Avenue. And it runs underneath the gardener. There are plans to take it all the way to Spadina. Fort York again to the right. Welcome to the Bentway. A shared space, pace kind of place. Space, pace. You don't hear those two words back to back very often. And just south of here is Lakeshore Boulevard. And the Bentway connects several neighborhoods with around 80,000 residents in total. always playing music at these scanning ranks. I might have to cut the music out of the video. That won't stop me from taking a walk alongside the scanning surface. And this is open from December 16th to January 7th from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. And from January 8th to February 19th. Weekdays from 5 till 9, Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays from 12 to 9. This might be the best ice skating trail of its kind in the city. Remember during the pandemic, there was a fixed capacity here, I think of 25 people and you had to book online. Skate rentals here. people walking up this way. Oh well. I was 
talking to a friend who spends a lot of time in Vancouver over the winter and they were talking about how Toronto has much more outdoor ice skating surfaces and why they think that might be a contributor as to why we produce so many more NHLers than they do. Ice skating is just more of a thing here. Here's a look at Fort York. And now to cross over the Garrison Crossing. And we'll head over a couple of split rail corridors. that cop is doing. But we're missing a go train going by. Well, I'll head up these stairs just over here. Then maybe I'll head through this new development. And I'll take me over to Strawn, and then we'll just pop up to King and Strawn. I think the Garrison Crossing here opened up about four years ago. But there's a GO train making its way east in the Union. Now that's what I call taking your dog for a walk. in the province. It's in the process of massively upgrading GO train service. In fact, transit in this region is about to get a whole lot better. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna not cross over this other rail corridor. Because instead, We'll cut through this new development over to Strawn. There's someone being healthy. 
but we'll take a little peek over. Stanley Park is just to the north of here. It's a pretty neat view. It was even better before when you could get a clear view of the financial district. And just west of here is the Liberty Village neighborhood. But this part just opened up very recently. In fact, Liberty Village is just over on the other side of Straw and straight ahead. This is Ordnance Street. What an odd name. They could have just called it East Liberty Street. As that's what's on the other side of Spadina here. Or rather Strawn, not Spadina. Oops. You could access the Bentway just south of here. And that's also where you go to access the Canadian National Exhibition and Exhibition Place just to the south and to the right. That's where you'll find the Prince's Gates. And again, that's Liberty Village just on the left that runs between here and Dufferin Street. So we are going to cross that other rail corridor, just not over the garrison crossing. Sounds like I just missed a train. That's what she was snapping a picture of. Oh, that was a go train.
And this is Wellington Street West. Rocking its new protected bike lane. Well, Wellington Street West on the west side. That is Doro Street over on the east side. Flip that around. Wellington Street on the east side. Doro on the west side. Blue Night Stop 363. I think that might take you all the way up to Eglinton West Station. There's a busy doctor's office and walk-in clinic. Perhaps too much glare on the screen to really see him. Connected to East Liberty Village Pharmacy. But what I'm going to do is hop on the streetcar here at Strawn and ride it over to either King or St. Andrews. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed this one, walking from the lake over through City Place and then to the Bentway, up through the Garrison Crossing and over to here at King and strong. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below if you wish to support what I do on YouTube. There's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides and there is a super thanks button appearing down below the video if you wish to say thanks that way. Anywho, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Yoink.